Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. And today it's going to be very abundant, very angelic. You will see, hopefully you can see our beautiful guest so radiant on YouTube. If not, I know you will feel her energy and her essence anyway, through her voice, through her energy, everything she's transmitting and the beautiful essence she's bringing not only today, for this podcast episode, but also into the world. So Taylor Page, I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. And you radiate so much beauty too. (laughs) Isn't it like so amazing, you know, when we can just like reflect this light and love like to one another. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up in that. It was usually like a lot of comparing, a lot of cutting. Mm -hmm. And now when I see women, how they can celebrate each other and we're like, this actually feels so much better than like compare ourselves or like compete, right? So thank you. I receive it. And um, before we dive in today, I love starting my podcast tiny bit differently. And I start it with a short guided meditation. Would you be open to receive it? Of course. I love that. Beautiful. So whatever you get to do just to get comfortable, whether it's in your chair, you can just gently close your eyes, find your comfort, find your space and start slowly breathing in through your nose, really allowing yourself to connect with your breath, with this present moment. Allowing yourself to slow down and everything around you seems to be slowing down with you. Nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. And everything around you helps you to go even deeper. And with each out breath, you're feeling your body relaxing more and more and more. And as your whole body is softening, I would love for you to visualize a beautiful sunny summer morning in South France. You just woke up in a beautiful, gorgeous Airbnb that you have rented for several months. And you are opening a beautiful glass French door to walk on a balcony or is the most comfortable furniture, fresh flowers, delicious breakfast awaiting for you. And also your journal, journal you're using to work on your book, to download your ideas, your feelings and thoughts. And as you are sitting down, And taking in all the gorgeous view. You're feeling so happy. So aligned. So blessed. And as you're grabbing your journal. You want to write there. For yourself. For your memories. One thing. So you can always remember this feeling. What would help you remember this feeling? What would you write down on the top of your page so you can always go back to it no matter where you are? And if it's not a secret, if anything came through, you can share it with us. What would you write on this page? Yeah, I had a couple things come through. One is just that gratitude is the bridge back to our higher self. And the second one that came through was bliss is possible. Bliss is possible in this earthly world if we create it and focus on it. Wow. I had like goosebumps when you said that because I feel like it's always a choice, right? Like we can look at what to complain about, what is wrong with the world or us, or we can choose the bliss and we can literally choose and create the heaven on earth. Yeah. So I'm very curious because, you know, some people there are born with this like inner bliss and inner knowingness. Mm -hmm. And some people, they experience their 
journey and and you know life through that what was your path have you been born into this like deep knowingness and living in the bliss or it's something you created on your journey it's definitely something I created on my journey (laughs) Mm. um I think there are certain like zodiac signs or stelliums that you can have in your chart which is when you have three or more planets in one sign or house that are just a little bit heavier energetically to bear. And it takes you more time to learn how to hold them. And in my opinion and experience, those signs are Pisces, Scorpio, Capricorn. Those are some of the heaviest signs to hold, sometimes even Aquarius. And so um, I think that once you kind of learn how to shoulder that. I mean, the human experience is walking through heaven and hell at the same time. And so it's interesting how your exterior reflects the interior. And so I did a whole lot of growth on myself. I hit rock bottom moments until I was able to fully experience the bliss and gratitude that I'm in now. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And when you're sharing those signs, that's beautiful. And honestly, I never heard it before. So you see, I'm already the learning. We are like two minutes in. <laughs> those would be the sign signs, or if it would be just the signs that we have in our top three. Those would be the signs that you carry a lot of energy in, in your chart. So if you have a stellium in those signs, which is three or more planets in one sign or house, and the houses that correspond with that are the eighth house, the 12th house and the 10th house. Those can be some just heavier energies that you don't always have the language to articulate when you're a kid. And so that's where you can feel misunderstood or disconnected or lean towards escapism. And what, as you get older and your brain develops more, you just have a bigger toolbox to carry that energy. Mm, that's really powerful. That's beautiful. And I, and I really love your honesty and your deep wisdom. And I'm also curious because I know you're also, you know, connected with angel, do angel readings. What led you on to connecting with angels? Like, what was that like for you? Was it someone who inspired you or angels came to you personally? What was it for you? Yeah. So growing up, I was very scared of everything. I would see like passed over dead people. I would connect to spirits. And when you're a kid, you just don't really understand and everything becomes scary. And when you're scared, your fear is like a magnet for more of those lower vibrational energies to come to you. And so I naturally completely closed off when I was a kid. And then I opened back up when I was 25, right before my Saturn return at 28. Those were really fertile years for me to practice and open up again after this rock bottom moment and our brain fully develops at 25. So that's also, I see a lot of people's path at a really pivotal moment at the age of 25. And so angels were what I felt comfortable connecting with because they're pure love. There was nothing to be scared of. And I naturally just have always gravitated towards angelic energy. And I feel like every reader and intuitive is almost like a different radio station, listen, getting a different frequency. And for me, it's been so natural to work with angels. Mm, that is so beautiful. And I'm curious, can you please share a little bit more about the sudden in return? Because I learned yeah. about it like, just a few years ago, I'm like, that makes sense. That made so much <laughs> sense. When I look back when I was like 28, 28 and a half, mm-hmm. like how messy <laughs> my life was back then. So mm-hmm. can you share with our listeners a little bit more in depth what the Saturn in returns means? Yes, of course. So Saturn return is when you become an adult astrologically. So until you've gone through your Saturn return, you're not considered an adult when it comes to what the star says, stars say about you. (laughs) Um, And so your Saturn return happens when Saturn, which is the planet of lessons, it's the teacher in the Zodiac. And when it goes through your entire chart back to where it was when you were born, that's your Saturn return. So for me, my Saturn's in Capricorn and these are generational planets. So all the people born within a couple years, Saturn changes signs every two and a half years. So everyone born within a two and a half year span will have the same Saturn sign. And you all, you go through these lessons as it goes through your chart. And then your Saturn return is usually over at about 
30 or 31, depending on where Saturn was in your chart. Um, and yeah, it's a truly transformational time. Everything is up for review. Everything changes. But what Saturn is really teaching you is where are you giving your power away? Where do you think you are not enough? And it will drag the rug out from under you to teach you that lesson. And it's very much like the tower card in tarot where everything falls apart. The foundation gets ripped away so that something more um, in alignment can be built in its place. Oh, girl, like, oh, my gosh, like when I learned about Saturn in return, I was like, it makes so much sense. Because back then I was healing from like eating disorder, and I was divorcing my first husband. And there was just like, it felt like there's no foundation, like everything was like stripped away. And of course, like now I understand it. And thank goodness that it happened. But sometimes when you're going through this, you're like, what do I do, right? It feels like literally your life, it's falling apart. So for those who are listening right now and they feel like connected to angels too, maybe, Mm -hmm. and they just don't know how to communicate with them. They don't know how to really connect with them. What are some of the steps that, you know, because what I'm hearing from you, what you said, you were always like tapped in and then you like didn't want to be tapped in and then you chose what to tap in. But for those who just have this inner calling and they're like, I feel curious about angels. I feel like Mm -hmm. it's calling me, but it's so much. And there can be so much overwhelming information online. Where can people start to create this connection and how do they know if who or what they're connecting with our angels? Yeah, I, I, there's so much to say here. And I think the very first part is everybody's definition of angel is a little bit different. Some people are talking about archangels. Some people are talking about past loved ones. Some people are talking about angelic spirit guides. And so everybody's talking about different things. And when I'm speaking about angels, I'm not speaking about past loved ones. Um, Archangels can be included, but I mostly in readings talk to your angelic guides, which are a form of energy that are pure, unconditional love that are uniquely attuned to your higher self. And they try to get you back to that place through their guidance. And so to connect with your angels, as they are a form of pure, unconditional love, one of the most foundational parts of this connection is the idea of free will. So if you don't want to hear from your angels, if you don't believe in them, then you won't because they love you so much, they're going to let you do life the way you want to do it. But if you want to connect with them, it all starts with inviting them in. And if you're new to this work, I recommend inviting them in out loud because the amount you feel crazy doing that shows you how much you have to clear away so that you can make a stronger connection with them. Um, I also recommend making a miracle journal, which is where you write down all of the signs, the synchronicities, the symbols, because something about angels is that their frequency is sometimes not sustainable in the life that we live, like society, social media, everything is programmed to make us forget immediately. And so you can have the most powerful experience of angelic connection. And a year later, you'll be like, Oh, I don't know if that was even real. But when you write it down, when you journal, it takes you right back to that place. So Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend that. And then ask your angels for a specific sign, you don't have to be passive in your in your relationship relationship ask them like for example the sign I told my asked my angels for was purple hearts and when I met my now husband when he asked me to be his girlfriend he gave me a purple amethyst heart without even knowing that was the sign from my angels and so it makes more momentum for miracles when you ask for a specific sign and then there's so much more to say about this but that's the foundation is invite them in ask for signs start creating a language with them you can say when I see this sign this is the meaning I'm assigning to it when I see this sign this is the meaning I assign to it because I see a lot of people getting the signs and recognizing them and then being like but I don't know what it means Mm -hmm. so you can assign meanings as well that is so beautiful and and I love 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 what you say and it's just such a beautiful divine timing I used to do like a not miracle journal but I was doing like manifestation journal because exactly Mm -hmm. like you say like sometimes we are praying for something and then it happens. And then 
we forget and we keep going and we are praying for something else, right? Yeah. But it's so fascinating because this morning I was thinking about my grandma. She transitioned, you know, mm-hmm. last year and we were super, super close. Like she was my soulmate. And it's interesting because after she passed, I was like desperate to get a sign to like, mm-hmm. you know, like just to get something. And I was like, keep praying for it and keep like, you know, like waiting to get like a dream or something. Nothing was happening. And then I remember one time and I can't remember timeline, really. That's why I feel like it's so important to do the miracle journal, like you're suggesting, Mm -hmm. because one time I was in a bathtub taking a shower and I was like thinking about her. I was like, I just want to sign and Mm -hmm. something literally swooped me, like move my body. And it was like, so, and then I, I come completely freaked wow. out because it was you're standing in a shower right it's slippery but it yeah. wasn't like me slipping it was yeah. literally moving me and putting me in the same position and I felt it in my whole body and I'm like okay 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 now I know I know I believe now right and I was thinking about this morning I was like I wish I would write it down or journal about it because I can't remember when exactly it happened you know yeah. and of course it's not like it's so important but like you said everything is programming out here to forget so love 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 those because that's something we can do and we can do it right away and I'm very curious you know because you also mentioned the higher self right Mm -hmm. can you go a little bit deeper on that too you know like to really understand what the higher self is and what is the relationship of the higher self with our like guardian angels or the angels who are like our guides Yeah, so this is a really hard concept to fully articulate and even understand from this reality, because I believe our higher self exists quantumly. And so our stories of who we are, our ego stories, like I'm Taylor, I do angel readings, I love astrology, like that story might have a certain um, connection to an idea of what the highest version of myself would be. But in reality, our higher self is really a pure force of oneness and connection. That's really hard to articulate. So it's so much bigger than just our material successes or how well we quote unquote do in this life. And it's so easy to get attached to those things. But in reality, I think our higher self is our highest possible vibration that we can exist at that brings us closest to our creator, creatrix consciousness and the oneness that we all are. And I think at a certain level, the answer to that is just love. And so with your angels, They are uniquely attuned to your like soul, which is a fragment of the whole, your soul's highest self. And they help guide you through this timeline and exploration of this story of consciousness to come back to that remembrance in that higher self, if that makes sense. It does. It's so powerful. And I know you mentioned that it's really challenging to describe it in this dimension, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I'm really curious, like, how can we tap into that energy of possibilities more? Because Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but it's challenging to live in a bubble, right? And we didn't come here to live in a bubble because there is like so much of everything, right? Different energies, different people, what we're being conditioned and projected on. But how can we tap into that energy more without wanting to isolate ourselves? Because I feel like sometimes we are like, I'll just ignore the world. I'll just stay here in my bubble. Mm. But that's not why we came here to experience this this world and and this lifetime either. So how can we balance that? Yeah, as far as tapping into the energy of possibility, I like to go back to the idea of routine because humans Mm. are such creatures of habit that we can just do the same routines and the weeks go by, the months go by, the years go by, and we're starting to feel heavy and weighed down and not in alignment. And we don't know why. Mm -hmm. And so if you can challenge yourself every day to do something different or out of order or something you wouldn't normally do, 
it changes up the chemistry of your brain to stay more open to possibilities, to stay more spontaneous. I think it also is a matter of pushing ourselves to do things that make us a little bit uncomfortable or force us out of our comfort zone. Um, I remember a story was when I was younger, I was so scared to do gymnastics. It like terrified me. And my mom took me and there was this one move in particular that scared me so much. I never wanted to do it. But then I just forced myself to do it over and over again until it became my favorite thing to do. It was the most fun. And so I think that's a metaphor for most of life where there's these things that call to us, but they also scare us and they're scaring our ego. They're scaring the story of self that feels threatened by it because it can feel growth and expansion on the other side of it. And that's really what self-doubt is. It's the higher self wanting to expand and create and then the ego saying, no, 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 you're not enough. You can't do this. And so when self-doubt comes up, it's really showing that you're actually on the right track to breaking out of these comfort zones. And so when it comes to co-creating with possibility, I think recognizing your self-doubt as actually showing you that you're just on the brink of breaking through. breaking out of routines and pushing yourself to do things that scare you a little bit. Oh my goodness. I love it so much because sometimes when we are facing our doubts or like limiting beliefs, we feel like something is wrong with us. We're like, well, I thought I already did the work, Mm -hmm. but it's such a beautiful reminder that you say it means that you're on the right path because you're doing something that it's like really challenging you and can support you in the growth. So Mm I absolutely loved it. I love how I'm feeling in just like few minutes and how much wisdom you brought. It was like so (laughs) packed. Uh, For those who wanted to connect with you even more, they cannot get enough of you. They're like, I need to learn more with this beautiful soul. What is your favorite place to connect with people online? Yeah. So Instagram is my favorite place to connect online. Be careful of fake accounts. I'll never cold DM you. I'm actually on a three-year waiting list for readings. So I won't ever try to get money or DM you. Um, I also have a course called Be Your Own Angelic Intuitive. It's on my website, angelsandamethyst.com with a whole lot more information. And code 333 will get you $33 off of that. I also have a love life course on how to connect with your angels and tap into that intuitive place to attract a soulmate connection. Um, And if you want to get on my wait list for readings, I have an offering called Earth Angel Club that I do once a month that has a astrological update, a energetic update, an archangel guided meditation and a group reading. And that also gives you priority scheduling with me. So those are all of my offerings. um, And I hope to see you guys on Instagram. Mm, So beautiful. Thank you so much for all the love you're sending into the world and how you're reminding people to stay uplifted and connected. Thank you. Thank you for having me.